Who's this? Who's this? Who is this? What? K.D. Lang. This is K.D. Lang. Jesus and H. Christ. <laughs> He's very young. Stella. That's no excuse. She's obsessed. I am not obsessed. Yes, you are. You want her. Maybe you should marry K.D. Lang. Well, don't think I wouldn't. Pretty sweet. Mm. Sweet, my ass. Savory. Mm. Mm. Delicious. If I were on death row, I'd request my final meal be right between K.D. Lang's legs. It's the opening night film. It is. And two greater actresses for those roles you would not find. Olympia yeah. Dukakis and Brenda Fricker. Both uh, Oscar winners, I think. Hey, I think At so. least nominated. I know no, Brenda no, Fricker. No, they are. Yeah, yeah, I thought yeah, so. Yeah. Um, just, you know, that, that is, Olympia's role is one saucy role. Like she sure swears her way through this film and, and Brenda just, you know, they're stealing each other's scenes basically. But Cloudburst is a fantastic film. It's, it's a Canadian film made by Tom Fitzgerald who... Um, film lovers would know from uh, titles like Beefcake, uh, The Hanging Garden. He's made a lot of sort of – most of his stuff is gay. Like he, he mostly works in sort of the queer film industry. Um, a very accomplished filmmaker. I'm not sure why he's not more famous than he is. I mean, most people know, know who he is, but he's – you know, I feel like his work is so polished and accomplished that he should be more famous than he actually is. So he's a great filmmaker and he's, he's just gone right off uh, his usual – uh, gay story with you know a story about uh, two elderly lesbians played by Olympia and, and Brenda who uh, have been together for many decades living a quiet life and and Brenda Fricker's uh, granddaughter decides that uh, Brenda needs to be in a nursing home mm. so she uh, puts her in a nursing home and uh, Olympia famously uh, breaks her out <laughs> one night and they they try to they're in the states and they go across to Canada to try and get married and I won't tell you too much more but it's no. it's a little bit Thelma and Louise meets I don't know what but um, is there a pretty Brad Pitt type there's a, boy there's in a there? very spunky looking boy in the the film that ends up hitchhiking with them and uh, he's, <laughs> oh. he's a great guy he's a he's a, a dancer so <laughs> but it just becomes more and more hilarious and uh, you know it, it's a funny film and you know the uh, both roles are, are fantastically played but it does have a serious side it has a little bit of a message about equal marriage but it doesn't hit you over the head with it so um, I thought it was a really fantastic film for opening night because I, I can't imagine anybody not liking this film yeah. um, I know it's you know probably a bit of a risk uh, if you if you just nut it down to the basics and say we're having an opening night film that's about two elderly lesbians <laughs> most of the gay community would probably just shriek and run away but uh, look I I have faith that people know who Olympia Dukakis is and, sure. and uh, uh, you know, I just think it would be a fantastic way to kick off the festival. And when you say elderly lesbians, they really are. Olympia is literally 80 years old now. Yes. What and a superstar. You know, yeah, yeah, she's amazing. And, you know, of course they play elderly roles. They're not, they're not you know, made up to be 50 or something. Yeah. They're, yeah, they're actually playing their age. So, yeah. Um, yeah, I'm really excited to see what people think. Uh, you know, I, I can't imagine anyone not liking it. So I think it's a, a great way to kick off the festival with a little bit of a message about equality because we do have mm. the fo focus on activism in the festival. So it does have that little link. And uh, you know what? It's the kind of film that might have been a bit hard to sell within the program. People might just mm. go, elderly lesbians, not interested. Yeah. Which, of course, you know, I'm... Look, I'm being a bit, you know, I'm stereotyping and, and being a bit uh, silly about it. But, you know, I, I do think that uh, if we can actually have it on opening night and kind of almost force people into seeing it, uh, they'll <laughs> they'll thank us later. Well, these are the things that you have to consider as part yeah, of the role, yeah. I guess. Yeah, opening night's a really hard gig to, to curate because, you know, you're trying to please a lot of people, different genders, different, you know, different tastes and, and uh, so it's always difficult. Before we uh, go through some of the panels and other things that are happening during the festival, let's swing to the closing night. What's that film? Yeah, it's a, like a complete turnaround from the opening night. It's a, it's a US film called Leave It on the Floor, which is kind of like Paris is Burning for the, you know, the, the 2012 audience. Mm. So, so it's set in, uh, you know, kind of ballroom clubs in LA. Um, it's a gay film, trans characters, um, 
fantastic music, really, yeah. really good dance. Uh, Beyonce, as choreographer, is responsible for a lot of the the dance uh, stuff in it. Sure. You know, it's got a story. It's not just a dance film, but, you know, it's, it's a fantastic way to end the festival. I think we're having a dance performance mm-hmm. at Closing Night Party. Maybe I've just told a secret that I shouldn't have, but that's all I'm saying. You'll like that. So it's written by a guy called Glenn Gaylord, who uh, many uh, film busts would know from Eating Out Films. Uh, he made a film a couple of years ago. He's made films that we've had in the festival before. He's actually coming out as well. His sister lives in coming Melbourne. Coming out, isn't he gay already? Yeah, yeah, he's coming out to stay as well. Oh, he's, okay. he's, his sister lives in Melbourne, so she's yeah, American. And so he's coming out to uh, introduce a session and spend a few days at the festival. Leave it on the floor. Sort of like Paris is Burning 2012 style. So if you don't know Paris is Burning, then you really... You um, need to come and see this. Yeah, you need to see yeah. this. Yeah. So Glee it, has inspired a lot of musical, dancey films, well, which is good. It's good. It's good. Nice. It's good. Um, there's short films, documentaries, features, and there's also panels. Talk to me about what the panels are about. Yeah, we do have a bit of a focus on activism. So we've got uh, five different special special presentations during the festival. So we've got panels on things like Evil Marriage, uh, Corey Earlham, uh, Jamie Gardner and Paula Gerber. Dr Paula Gerber will be talking about what the latest uh, legalities are, which could all change Changing. next week. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you, know, you never know what's going to happen. Um, uh, we've also got a trans panel. We, we got this great film on a trans panic murder, which is a bit gruesome, mm-hmm. that happened in the States. And and I, it's just struck me that I didn't know, and I know a lot of trans people here don't really know much about the trans panic and trans laws and, you know, the hate crimes mm-hmm. and that sort of thing. So we've got a solicitor called Brian Walters and Sally Goldner, of course, Melbourne's uh, probably most famous trans activist, and Sim Kennedy, who are going to talk about a um, little bit about the legalities of uh, the trans panic defence does it exist here? Who yeah, can the use state it? of play. State of play. Uh, what else we got? We've got uh, Grant, who we heard earlier, is actually going to speak on a panel about filmmakers as activists. Mm. You know, what sort of, uh, you know, what sort of attitude change can they engender with their films? You know, are they just entertaining, or are they, you know, trying to enlighten and educate as well? And we've also got a panel with uh, federal MP Adam Band and Daniel Whithouse on uh, basically chatting about the difference between. Uh, I guess, individual activism versus more formal organisational activism. So I think that'll be fantastic as well. I, You know, we could talk about the serious stuff all day. In fact, we're not allowed to talk about much more because our time is almost up. But uh, there is a Joy spo- sponsored session yes. at uh, the Melbourne Queer Film Festival number 22, which is called the Lesbian Space Alien... No, Codependent. It's Le- called Codependent Lesbian Space Alien Seeks Same. <laughs> it's a classic. quite long and it's hard to say very fast. Uh, I was going to play a little bit of music, but seriously, it just sounds sci-fi and weird and a little bit wonderful. So can you give us a quick summary on that one, Lisa? Yeah, if you think think in uh, 1950s black and white, crazy, kind of cheaply made sci-fi. So we're talking, you know, you can see the little uh, lines in the background. And I think at one stage the girl is, one of the aliens is wearing like a pl- plastic cups on her ears as if they're, <laughs> you know, some kind of highfalutin kind of uh, headphone thing. So... Um, Look, it's a fantastic film, really dry, uh, New York-style sense of humour, but um, hilarious. I can't wait to see it with a, with a crowd. Again, I saw it in uh, San Francisco and we all screamed with laughter. Yeah, it's going to be a Joy-sponsored uh, session, so you, yeah, stay tuned, you'll hear all about it. Definitely something for the boys and the girls, that one. Don't miss the smorgasbord of international queer film favourites at this year's 22nd Melbourne Queer Film Festival, March 15 to 25. See mqff.com.au for full program details, ticket outlet info and secure web bookings. Tickets selling fast. Joy 94.9 is a proud media partner for MQFF 2012.